Uh, what else has been going on? Oh, there's always something going on in our little part of the industry, Johan. Uh, I've got a few things that I wanted to share today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. First things first, uh, an update to one of our, uh, we have many favorite community tools, uh, but one that you and I have been using uh, quite a lot recently is the uh, Into Management tool. We've talked about it number of times here on office hours and always try to make sure that we stay up to date with uh, updates coming through. Um, so I did notice there was an update uh, just a few days ago. Um, uh, one of the new features here you can see uh, listing the templates for the settings catalog policies for security baselines, uh, which are fantastic. Um, uh, and then a, a number of fixes as well. Um, in here, um, in addition to not only some of the features or specific uh, profiles referenced by the tool, but in some of the documentation. Uh, this is one thing that um, some of you, I know you, Johan, have heard me talk about. I love this tool for documentation. It's fantastic. Um, I've got uh, one of my uh, one of my colleagues recently used this for um working through the security baseline change from the old uh, policies over to the new settings catalog based uh, security baselines and the documentation feature of this tool made it so much easier to distribute those changes out to um, users. Uh, So really just fantastic stuff. I don't have anything but good stuff to say about this tool. Um, So that was the first thing that I wanted to share today. Uh, second, I haven't totally gotten through the entire post yet, uh, but Ben Whitmore put up a post on the MS Endpoint Manager blog uh, earlier this week as well around unpacking the uh, Intune MDM certificate. Um, <laughs> I like how he points out in here that this is just a tiny deep dive in into the certificate, um, but basically uh, talks about... Um, some of the information you can get uh, around the device and the tenant itself that's built into the certificate. Um, So if we scroll down here a little bit, you'll see it's actually breaking up the various bytes of the data in the certificate um, and how you can unpack that, the information that you can get out of it. Uh, So if this is something that you're interested in, um, definitely recommend checking out uh, Ben's blog post here. There is a PowerShell script down here at the bottom of the post, uh, I guess about in the middle of the post, that will actually take the certificate and help you unpack it uh, for you, um, which is great stuff. Another tool in the toolbox for sure. Well, I, I, I'm not going to say anything uh, bad about the, the, the work that, that Ben is doing here, but in, in general, when Ben says something is not deep dive, it is usually quite deep dive. <laughs> you, you spend an hour or two reading through, and then you spend a day or two trying to figure out what you just read in, in the post. So he, he has a knack for writing very, very detailed blog posts. So. Thank you, Ben, but I wouldn't say this is an overview. This is a deep dive into certs in this case. A uh, little d- bit more than a tiny deep dive? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's the, 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 uh, his, his uh, humble James Bond style that goes through there and kicks in, or the British, whatever. Yeah. That's right. No, I mean, take a look at the script here alone. You can tell how much work and effort he put into this. It's just uh, fantastic. Brain-hurting type stuff in a good way. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, All right. And then I also came across a quick blog post from an old friend, Daniel Ratliff, who has been had a couple of (laughs) blog posts come out recently. Uh, So I wanted to make sure we shared this. Um, And he put up a a little PowerShell script here and blog poster on how to automate uh, performance monitoring um, within Windows. Uh, surrounding the data collector sets that you can put together in Performance Monitor, how to gather that data and and put it all together. 
Um, so short and sweet blog post, um, the script, not as short and sweet, um, but uh, does link to a script that helps you automate this. Um, you can see some of the starting and output here um, and what comes together. So fantastic stuff from Daniel here as well. Want to make sure if this is something that you're looking at doing, uh, anything that we can make performance gathering or performance monitoring on our clients uh, a little bit easier, I am all for it. So thank you, Daniel, for this post. It, it's a small world. I actually have a meeting scheduled with him and I'm part of his team tomorrow. We're going to talk about branch cash troubleshooting as, as you do on a Thursday morning. Of course. Um, yeah. <laughs> That might be better than actually a, a, a cup of coffee. That'll really get your get your brain going in the morning. Yep, yep, yep. Awesome. And then some not so awesome news that I wanted to share. We were just uh, talking about this briefly before we hopped on. Um, I came across this that uh, some Western Digital uh, NVMe drives are causing twenty four H two to blue screen. Uh, saw a couple of blog posts uh, writing this as 24H2 causing some headaches, but I don't know if I've got a Western Digital NVMe drive as my system drive and I'm getting blue screens. That's a little bit more than a headache. <laughs> I uh, actually have been looking at those drives. I had one of their four terabytes before, but they recently released their eight terabyte drive. Mm hmm and Samsung doesn't yet have an eight terabyte. So I was like, oh, that was interesting. Only challenge is it was like a thousand dollars. I'm like, oh, ouch. That's a bit of a challenge, yes. Um, the good thing is, it sounds like if you do decide to overcome that challenge, there is a workaround uh, for these drives here, a registry workaround. So. Fair enough. You, you might be able to, as long as you can overcome the $1,000 price point uh, for the 8 terabyte, uh, you might still be able to put one of these in your systems with this workaround. Glad to hear. Um, yeah, so far, though, I've got a couple of devices, physical devices, too, by the way, not just VMs, because I'm living on the edge here, Johan. Um, I, I've moved to 24H2, and fingers crossed... Um, no issues. One of my favorite things so far is uh, uh, Microsoft came up with this fantastic concept of having uh, text underneath the icons in a in the context menu. Uh, oh, in Explorer, know, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, uh, a fantastic idea. Um, <laughs> I was very happy to see. Uh, it's much easier to figure out what's copy and paste now. Yeah. Uh, I'm too old to just these small icons. I, <laughs> it's just no. Exactly. The younger generation deal with that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so those were the things that I had for today. All right. Um, I, I have a few things on my mind, so I'm going to go ahead and steal the screen. Um, all right. First of all, I was very happy to be approved as a uh, uh, speaker at Ignite uh, in Chicago. Thank you, sir. So if you go to the session catalog, which was published recently, and, uh, well, it helps having a unique name. Uh, uh, very few of us uh, in total on the planet, but even fewer of us that actually work with Config Man and Intune and other things. But uh, I'll be doing a session on upgrading to Windows 11 using Intune. Uh, I also got a text from Leo Bella last night. Uh, apparently, I'm been uh, voluntold to show up for a, an MVP panel on Intune, so I'm going to do that as well. So uh, exciting times! I'm looking forward to, to the conference. And if anyone uh, you're listening attending tonight, please come say hi. I'll be quite likely to staff the expo area or the expert area in the expo area uh, a few of the days there as well. So come and say hi if you have chats. Now, also, uh, I was uh, busy last night and this morning uh, really some, uh, doing some blogging. Um, I had a need to copy everything from one boot image over to another boot image. And long story short, um, in Config Manager, if, if you have a boot image like I have here, uh, 
this is my uh, old boot image. Uh, and you have some drivers. If you only have like four of them, it, it, it's not too complicated to take a new boot image that you create and uh, make sure you have the same drivers there because you can just have them side by side and you can add and compare. But if you have like 30, uh, which I have stumbled across some organizations having, uh, it is more challenging. So I, I wrote a little PowerShell script that I have here. Uh, where you simply specify your source boot image, you specify your destination boot image. Uh, I have a bit of a logging function uh, where I use some stuff here. But long story short, uh, I'm defining those variables, connecting to the uh, PowerShell drive for config manager, basic validations, making sure that the boot images I specified actually exist, uh, found that helpful. Uh, but then here I'm connecting to that object and out of that object, I get a bunch of uh, drivers out of that mix. Uh, and basically then I'm looping through uh, each driver from the source, uh, logging some details in the log file here, but then I'm adding them to the destination. So if I run through this script, uh, it's simply going to head and, and add those drivers in. And it doesn't hurt if you run it multiple times. It's not going to add them like four times. It's just going to realize they were already there and, and life is good. But long story short, this script will duplicate drivers from one boot image over to another. And I tested this. It also works if you have boot images with uh, different versions uh, on them. Because you probably know that if you go to a boot image that is matching your ADK installation folder or in installation on the server, on the provider, um, uh, you can see the drivers. But if you pick a boot image that doesn't match what you have, you, you cannot see the drivers, making it even harder to guess what you've added to them. Uh, but the publisher could found them. So it seems to happily ignore what the console prevents you from doing. So it worked just fine there. Uh, so that was my uh, morning there. Uh, we also have, we mentioned this a few times, but, but, but you have an online uh, academy, a community here um, that we trying to convince uh, more people to share content, answer questions and whatnot. And uh, since we are coming into the kind of scarier uh, season. Uh, we have uh, uh, posted uh, a little uh, invite here to share a war story from your from your IT career and we make sure to uh, uh, reward uh, the best stories coming out of that one. Uh, I have one in, in, in particular in mind for myself uh, in involving uh, 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 a little bit of small drive bay and a hammer uh, on a running system. Uh, I, will, I will put in for sure. Uh, speaking of hammers, I actually had a customer who was very, very creative. Uh, they had an old Novell server, speaking of stories, and he got a large sticker of a hammer and taped it inside of the chassis on that Novell server. He called it reverse psychology. <laughs> <laughs> that that novel server knew what would happen if it decided to misbehave. And lo and behold, that novel server never we had any problems with. It ran for years and years and years and years. So anyhow, if you have a story to share, we hope you will be interesting in sharing it. Uh, it. Yeah. What else? There were a few more things. Da, da, da. Oh, yes. You didn't share the guide to Ignite, did you? Last week? I don't believe I did, no. All right. So uh, at Ignite, I should have mentioned earlier, but I forgot, uh, there is a ton uh, well, a good few. Uh, sessions on Intune at Ignite this year. So uh, if, if you're there, uh, 
I recommend attending to those. So I wanted to share this link. And then I also stumbled across, let's see. Actually, before you move on from this one, I, uh, Matt did have a question already. Uh, can you please share the best sessions for Ignite? Is this what you would direct him towards? Well, as a starting point, uh, I actually signed up for a pre-day uh, myself, uh, not to speak, but to, to listen. And they're doing a pre-day on uh, Windows Server 2025. So I'm going to okay. attend that one, uh, the Monday. Uh, but this support tip also showed up in my feed uh, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Yes. Um, if you have devices that you are removing and adding into legacy Active Directory and you have them in hybrid, uh, there was a support tip here to make sure that you always unenroll them from MDM also, if that's the case, and a little bit of, of an explanation to, to why that is uh, from the support organization behind uh, in tune. Uh, so yeah, that was the last thing I had there. <laughs>